Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to the TDR Trade to Black podcast. Hope you all had a great weekend. I'm your host, Shad Dales. Big show here today. A week ago, we got the big news that Measure 3 will be accepted and on the Florida, or I should say, the election ballot next fall. So we have CEO Kim Rivers of True Leave coming over in just a moment as well. We saw a little bit of a slower day on the markets, but that's okay after last week. Need to take a deep breath because there's lots on the horizon. So let's jump right into today's show and welcome in TDR co-host, Anthony Varel, happy Monday. Good to see you. Hope you had a good happy weekend Monday. and a little bit Great. quieter day, but that's okay. We got a lot on our plate this week. We're going places, aren't we? Yeah, it'd be nice to get to DC, um, get in front of some lawmakers, really get a pulse, see what's going on. And uh, yeah, then we got Ben Singer next week. So it's a busy, busy two weeks in front of us. That's for sure. We're getting feedback that we need to ask very specific questions to get some good information out for some of these politicians because they are politicians for a reason, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious to, uh, very curious as to the experience we're about to have in Washington. Yeah, so about seven days right around right now, the Supreme Court of Florida, they accepted Measure 3, and it will be included on the election ballot next fall, paving the way for what could be the biggest cannabis market, or at least one of them, for the state of Florida. And no bigger player in the state of Florida than Truly, as we welcome in the CEO, Kim Rivers, back to the podcast. Happy Monday. Good to see you. Happy um, Monday. Had any chance to like take a deep breath with all this hard work <laughs> over the last couple months, years? But uh, I'm, I'm sure last Monday was definitely a step in the right direction. Was it not? Oh, for sure. It was a it was a great day, um, really historic day, as we were able to finally get um, adult use on the on the ballot officially in the state of Florida um, and launch the um, vote yes on three campaign. So um, really a, gr a great day in Florida history. Um, as all you guys may know or may remember, um, that effort has been made in the past and has stopped, has, yeah. been, has fallen short at the Supreme Court step. So um, it really was this is the farthest that we've gotten. So um, yeah, it's uh, right. it's great. A lot of, lot of work ahead though, for sure. Not like you don't know the answer. And I'm not saying this has been approved, but right mm -hmm. around four o'clock around this time a week ago, like, how'd you feel? Were you nervous at all? Or did you think you were going to get the information that you wanted to hear? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, it's interesting. Um, you know, I was talking to my family sort of before, and it, there was a roller coaster, right? Because we thought it was going to come on Thursday, and then it didn't come on Thursday. And then it, there's kind of a scramble like, oh, gosh, you know, well, we think we know what happens if the court doesn't rule at all. But maybe we don't because that's never happened before in Florida history. So there's a little bit of a uh, you know, now what? And then yeah, you know, the court came out at 630 that night, I think because between um, cannabis supporters and, you know, uh, obviously abortion is um, up as well. So there were a lot of folks who were very interested in how the Supreme Court was going to rule. I think they got inundated. Yeah. Pretty sure it was the most um, Twitter comments that they've ever had. And so they put out a statement actually on on X um, on a, on that that evening around 630 that said, hey, everyone, we're going to release this on Monday at 4 p.m. And so, you know, there was a little bit of a start stop there. And then over that weekend, it really was that sort of feeling of, listen, we've done everything that we can. Um, yeah. You know, I always say I tell my kids this all the time, like as long as you leave it all in the field, as long as you do and you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, you've done the best job that you can. And that's really I, I went into that day just having that feeling, that sense of calm yeah. of look, we, we did the best we could. I don't feel like we would have done anything differently. And, you know, we feel good about it. But if they, you know, don't rule, then it's a blow to democracy. But it is what it is. It's a great day, though. Great response. Yeah, great. I'm sure. But Anthony, great. far away. Yeah. So, so Kim, obviously, we had a lot to celebrate on Monday. Um, and then midweek, Governor DeSantis came out and gave his <laughs> remarks. I believe that he's talking to his base. He's more so talking on a national level. You, as well as all of the market participants here, have built one of the if not the strongest medical market in the country under his purview. I mean, any comment as per what he was saying, because he did say ultimately the states will decide. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, listen, I mean, I think that, um, I, I think, and remember it's, it's not just cannabis, right. It's, there's also abortion that is, yeah. on the, that is on the, on the, on the, um, on the ballot as well. And I think that, you know, if I'm sitting in his shoes, I, I think that was probably a bit of a surprise, for a lot mm -hmm. of folks, there was a lot of folks that were, um, you know, maybe not expecting that um, that amendment to make it past the court. And so I think there's a little bit of sort of, you know, finding footing post post both um, announcements on Monday. Um, yeah. I think that, you know, DeSantis has been consistent for a long time around his, um, 
you know, his comments around the smell and around, you know, not necessarily being um, excited about having marijuana everywhere. I think there's some additional education that needs to happen there, which we've been working yes. on in terms of, hey, we agree with you, by the way, and we would absolutely expect and support the legislature coming in and the amendment specifically allows for the legislature to come in and to regulate what's called time, place, and manner um, to prohibit just like they do with alcohol use, just like they do with cigarette use, um, you know, consumption in certain places. And federal law actually already prohibits that and that would continue and it relates to colleges, universities, any, any place that has federal public funding, parks, et cetera. So, um, you know, I think that, um, yeah, there's there's you know kind of off the cuff reactions right now, and um, we'll see how that we'll see how that plays out. Um, and, and again, I think it's our job, right, to to take a beat, um, to turn the page, and to really begin to lean into that education conversation, which I'm super excited about. Candidly, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> very very excited to get out. And we have so much so many more facts and actually evidence based scientific research um, articles and studies that have been done. Um, that we're going to be able to really, I think, educate folks in a very meaningful way. And um, I, I think that's always a positive kind of regardless of outcome. Absolutely. And I mean, I, I was I said that last week. I mean, getting the acceptance of the ballot initiative onto the ballot in November is great, but that's the first step. The real yep. work starts now. Yep. So, I mean, you were huge in getting the signatures to getting to getting three um, on the ballot with Smart and Safe Florida. Um, what does the road look like ahead? Mm -hmm. um, as far as the actual work goes from education to grassroots campaigns to coordinating all the pieces on the board that you're going to need to coordinate to make sure that we break the 60 percent threshold come November. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, fortunately, I feel very comfortable and confident with the professionals who are um, leading the campaign. Um, it's the same group that has, was in charge of the signature gathering effort. Um, and, you know, they are absolutely professionals. This is what they do. Um, and then I think that coupled with all the experience that we've had um, as it relates to the medical amendment, and um, we were involved there as well. And so mm -hmm. just understanding, you know, it's a mixture, right? I mean, it's a mixture of sort of kind of the professional, the formula, if you will, of, hey, this is what it takes to win a campaign in the state of Florida. Here's what, here's how you need to do it, when you need to do it, um, what tools work, what maybe you don't want to invest in, et cetera. Coupled with, I think, those lessons, like you mentioned, from the grassroots organization that's happened successfully in Florida um, and certainly happened with the medical with the medical initiative. So right now, that game plan is being kind of finalized, if you will, with the okay. understanding that you have to build in flexibility because the reality is there's a, a lot of pol like polling and data as you all know, it's really, we're very data driven. And so yeah. that's going to be no different here. Yeah. And, and so, you know, we're going to be polling throughout. And really, as we approach summer, um, those pollings will start to have a, a lot more weight and we'll be able to lean into those demographics that maybe need some supportive messaging um, and that will overlay on top of the broad based messaging. So you're going to see um, it's going to be a multifaceted approach. There'll be um, kind of, you know, messaging that's broad. There's coalitions that we're going to be announcing and um, different support groups that we're going to be announcing. Um, canvassing efforts that will be happening. And um, so there's going to be, you know, again, you, you don't want to peak too early. So you want to make sure that you're pulsing the market appropriately. So if folks have an opportunity to, to absorb what you're, what you're telling them. Um, yeah. Because, you know, for some people, they've never really even thought about cannabis um, in, yeah. in sort of a meaningful way. Right. And now we're, asking them to do something as it relates to it. So, you know, that takes a, a multifaceted, multifaceted approach, but um, yeah, really again, um, feel, feel good about the team that we've got and, and feel good about the plan so far. And, and the fact that we've got the folks who are, you know, experienced enough that when those curveballs come, which they will, um, yeah. look, Florida, and this cannot be overstated. Florida is a huge state with Huge. lots of demographics. And so it is complex and it is expensive mm -hmm. and it is um, multifaceted. And so, you know, this is not going to be a one and done. And I know folks were like, oh my gosh, you know, great. Other players came to the table. That is great. It's a start. Um, yeah, and yeah. we it's going to be, it is, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a lift, but um, hey, we've got a shot. So we, yeah, we've yeah. got to, we've got to take it. Who would have thought 20 years ago we'd be talking about this today and how hot of a topic this is amongst Floridians. And I'm sure when you're out on the campaign trail, basically, you know, educating consumers, you'll probably hear this question a lot. And uh, Tom Angel, our friend over at Marijuana Moment, writes, can you ask him to respond to Governor DeSantis' claim that passing the cannabis initiative would lower the quality of life in Florida? How would you respond if someone was in the crowd and asked you that question while you're trying to educate them and bring awareness to the overall industry? 
Yeah, I mean, so as a born and raised Floridian, right, I think I'm kind of uniquely positioned to be able to answer that question. Um, one, right, we have a very robust and vibrant medical marijuana market in the state of Florida. And I don't think that we've seen any diminution of quality of life in the state um, since that program has launched. If anything, I think that folks would say the opposite, um, which is why I think that we actually have a shot um, at the um, at the um, at passing this and making yep. the 60 percent threshold. Right. The sky has not fallen. Um, and uh, folks, you know, I think see that choice is a good thing. I think, interestingly, when you compare um, marijuana to alcohol, and I think that's a very important distinction, uh, important comparison <laughs> here, right? The data is very, very clear that cannabis, it, by all metrics, whether you're talking about DUIs, whether you're talking about hospital visits, whether you're talking about deaths, whether you're talking about long-term side effects, is significantly safer and should be an alternative that is offered to Floridians. So, um, you know, I would actually say that I think we could improve quality of life yeah. um, and improve the experience by having an alternative that is absolutely scientifically, yeah. you know, evidence-backed better for you um, than, than alcohol. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, again, you sure to get that out there. Do you show some of this data to government officials and what's so, their response? Yeah, I mean, so I, I will say we do. Um, and I think that more importantly than necessarily showing it to government officials, I think it's actually compiling it in a way that is digestible and can right. be repeated. And so that's what I'm talking about in terms of what's to come is how do we break that ah. apart and, and write and get that into the bloodstream in a way, again, that's valid, that can be taken seriously and um, where folks are kind of nodding along saying, oh yeah, that makes a ton of sense, right? Gotcha, great. So, so the first time around was smart and safe. I think it was about 40 million uh, that Truly contributed um, mm -hmm. to that campaign. Yeah. Um, this time around, I think I had saw a tweet last week that there was a coalition forming. I think you had mentioned uh, Verano, Cureleaf, and some of the other players. So, I mean, what, what does that look like? Like what synergistically are the current market participants, I guess, doing as far as game planning? Um, to, I guess, tackle this as a whole. Yeah, I'm very thankful and appreciative of folks who have come to the and stepped up and um, come to the table. Um, you know, it's it's very welcome. Um, and, uh, you know, what I what I would say is that um, so we have we are launching right and um, this this coalition whereby we're all um, working to be coordinated in our messaging. We're working mm -hmm. to be coordinated in um, making sure that we're utilizing our resources because really this is about um, also, right, like leaning into the patient base that we've established, our employee base, et cetera, and making sure everybody's got the facts so everyone can talk intelligently about this issue when asked. Um, you know, I think that, you know, we, I always say we want to we want to create, you know, kind of this evangelistic um, mindset. And so um, and we're all going to we're each going to do that in a little bit of a different way. And that's totally OK. But at the mm -hmm. same time, we want to make sure folks are operating off of a, a singular playbook. Um, and have the facts and data available to support them in how they're, um, you know, how they're getting that message out and across. So we'll be meeting um, and sharing, you know, information, sharing data um, with that group on a very regular basis. And so this is just another shameless plug for any other organization, or company yeah. who wants to get involved. Um, and it's not too late um, because this is, just, this is just phase one, and there's going to be many other phases along the way. And um, and so you know, reach out to me. Um, um, reach out to Smart and Safe Florida, um, you know, either way, and we'll get you plugged in. And you'll have first row access to what's happening, polling data, strategy, um, et cetera. And would love your would love to have additional folks yeah. join that, join the yeah. fight. Is, is there anything that, that that investors, enthusiasts, or patients can do from like a grassroots perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Um, to get involved with Smart and Safe. Thank you. Absolutely. Smart and Safe Florida .com join the email list and um, please check it often. Um, we will be engaging that group as we move forward. So I just mentioned there's going to be some coalitions that are, um, you know, specific, you know, demographics that are going to be launched. There's, you know, opportunities for folks to come to the, come to meetups, to get trained if they want to be canvas, okay. if they want to canvas neighborhoods, et cetera. Or, you know, there'll be organized events that you can participate in. There's going to be all kinds of different opportunities. And also, if you if you want to get involved and you want to just donate five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever. Um, like I said, I mean, it's going to take a village here to get this thing across. Um, 60 percent is no joke in Florida in a presidential year. You're talking about huge numbers that we need to hit, the, hit the yes button. So, yeah. um yeah. Um, so either, you know, if you're here in Florida, please sign up and, and we'll tap into you from a physical perspective. If you're not and you want to get involved and want to stay in the know, um, like I said, any any donation amount would be much appreciated. 
Okay. I got to admit, uh, last time we were on, like everybody was speculating, oh, what what's going on with Kim? What's going on with this 280E and all this, you know, stuff back in November? <laughs> yeah. And everything came to fruition at the end of your uh, latest uh, financials. But uh, Brian writes, hey, Kim, congrats on the 280E refund. That was probably the biggest takeaway, I think, Anthony, that we got from uh, earnings season amongst all the companies. But job well done. Uh, what's been the response, I guess, and how'd you do it? Yeah, I think people are, I mean, I think the, the response has been, you know, happy surprise, yeah. I guess, <laughs> um, yeah. a mixture thereof. Um, you know, I mean, that certainly was my response, you know, as well to a certain extent. Um, and I would say just kudos to the entire team um, for, um, you know, for navigating that and continuing to navigate it, right? I mean, it's an ongoing process and it will be an ongoing process, as I mentioned before, um, right? We are um, certainly, you know, aware that this is all still pending and, and out there um, and still has some time that needs to elapse um, before we reach a final resolution. And that part of that final resolution could absolutely end up in litigation. So, you know, we are being... Um, as I, and I know folks don't love this, but it's just, again, recovering lawyers. So no. I'm not interested in, in, you know, divulging legal strategy to a potential um, opponent prior to when we get to that stage. Um, yeah. Of course, in the event that we have final resolution, happy to have full and wholesome conversations with anyone and everyone um, about it, but we've got it. We've just got to get to that point. Um, Makes sense. And so, yeah. Be patient, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, yeah. Is there any color? I mean, speaking of the, I guess the greater truly footprint, um, is there any color, anything moving in Georgia um, right now as far as progress in that market? Yeah. So we actually had a couple of wins in Georgia um, this past legislative session that um, I know I'm excited about because it's, an, it's a um, sort of a step towards increased patient access. So yeah. we're slowly and listen, it's a very, as we all know, it's a very conservative state and it's taken a very long time to get to this point in Georgia. So just so everybody is aware, it took seven years for them yeah, to, um, you know, from when they decided initially that they wanted to have a program to actually first sale. So it's, it just moves at a different pace. But um, that being said, um, they actually made it so that folks can receive their medical cards in the mail. That sounds ridiculous. And via email. Okay, that's a huge deal. Um, previously, literally, someone had to drive to one of the health offices that may not be close by to you. Um, in Georgia to pick physically pick up their card before they could go into a store. So wow. slowly but surely we're making progress in Georgia um, by knocking down some of those barriers to access. There's still a little bit of an unknown, a lot of an unknown as it relates to the pharmacy side mm -hmm. of things in Georgia and what's happening there. Um, you know, we're moving forward more on the lines of, you know, keeping our dispensary plan open while also keeping lines of communication open with pharmacists who have said that they're super interested in carrying products and, to, and moving down that. So we're seeking clarity um, on that, on that angle, but um, okay. otherwise, you know, I'd say incremental progress in Georgia. Yeah. And then any comment as it relates to New Jersey, I know that you had won a license recently there um, it kind of taking the wait and see approach. I mean, I know we saw several MSOs actually report a dip in sales from a retail perspective. And I know there's social equity licenses that are also coming online there right now. So is it kind of like a call option and just a nice card to have in your back pocket? So there's strict requirements in um, in Jersey in terms of how soon you have to get open. And uh, we actually okay. said, thank you, no thank you, um, and gave that back to the regulators to allow them to issue to someone who was prepared and sitting at the ready. Look, I'm not trying to hold something up and, and be a placeholder, yeah. right? That's not the right thing to do from a corporate action perspective um, mm -hmm. for folks that want access. That's not who we are. So we said, look, this isn't something that we're wanting to really lean in. Um, we applied two years ago. <laughs> yeah. So um, the market was very different at that time than it is now. And um, for us, again, our focus is on our existing markets, continuing to build out. And then, of course, obviously, Florida, where where our, our resources need to be invested. And the yeah. last question I have is on Florida, obviously. You have the biggest footprint now. Yeah. Is there a target that you want to get to dispensary-wise or retail-wise ahead of adult use? Yeah, I mean, so we we did like we always do. We gave some some numbers as it relates to stores for this year, um, and mm -hmm. we sort of hedged and said, listen, that could flex, you know, depending on depending on what happens. And so I would say that's our best um, that's our best you know target for you know current like kind of right now. Um, okay. And that's you know I would say around tw you know, 20, 25 stores. Um, so you know, and I would just say that stay tuned. A lot of this is going to be dependent on obviously the vote, 
but of course, then what happens with the legislature as it relates to implementation? Um, yeah, there's yeah. a lot still yet to be decided um, as it relates to exactly how the program's going to roll out um, mm -hmm. and, and the details. So that's conversation for another day. Um, but, you know, we need to get it across the finish line as it relates to yeah. um, voted on first. So even if you see the Floridians vote in favor for this come the fall, it's even more work that's got to dive into. And it's not like we're celebrating. Yes, it's a great announcement, but a lot of work and a lot of timelines still to be uh, brought to fruition, correct? Yes and no. Um, so the amendment is drafted. We sort of take our cues from some other markets um, where it is self-implementing, meaning that existing operators are grandfathered in and will be able to begin sales six months later. Um, okay. Florida, unlike other states, does they the hist if history is any indication anyway, they take that very seriously. And yeah. so I would fully expect sales to begin um, in May of 2025. Um, that being said, there is a legislative session that is regularly scheduled. Um, and that was purposeful because there there has to be implementation, like implementing legislation that, that, yeah. is, like, that needs to happen for them to come in. So the thing we were just talking about, right, um, smoking in public as an example, right, and yeah. um, making sure that, right, there's a, there's possession limitations. So they're going to need to educate law enforcement. There needs to be resources for that. More than likely, they'll be setting a tax rate, um, right, on on um, on the adult use market. So those details need to be worked out. Um, and you know, they also have an opportunity. It's you know, current MMTCs, which is what we're called in Florida, mm -hmm. are grandfathered in. They also have, you know, if, if they want to have any additional licensing, um, you know, they, they can. Um, the conversation about wholesale, non-wholesale. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. So yeah. there's a lot there's a lot to work out um, post-passage. But I will say um, I do fully expect sales to start May of 2025. Is the well, post-passage where DeSantis can start to get involved in the in, in the equation? Is that where his, his preconceived notions and just information on the industry is going to need to get, I guess, the ship righted. Um, well, so so keep in mind, it's the legislature, right? So, I mean, yeah. then it's a conversation around, like, right, how much, in, look, there is line item veto in the state of Florida for a budget, yeah. but I don't think that really this is going to be a lot of budgetary conversation. So okay. he can choose to just sign or veto the bill. But again, you're talking about an implementation package. So Got my it. guess is his input would be, you know, would be considered during that legislative process. But it is okay. the full legislature Plus, of course, any, um, you know, any items where he would like mm -hmm. to or his staff would like to weigh in. So okay. um, but at that point, right, you've passed you've passed an initiative with yeah. over 60 percent, hopefully with a comfortable margin of victory is what I would what I would be shooting for. Um, and you are, at, you know, it's the will. It is the will of the people. So I. Yeah. yeah. And he has been very consistent in you know, being deferential. I mean, one of the first acts that he did as governor was actually having, you know, requesting the legislature, calling the legislature in for a special session to implement smoking um, to fully enact the amendment, the previous medical amendment, um, because it was the will of the people. So it would be a pretty, you know, big departure for him to to want to lean too heavy once the folks have voted. Mm. Well, it sounds like you got a pretty normal nine to five type job, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> I always have. And you just throw this on top. It's no problem. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, it sounds like we're going to be in the same place as you in 24 hours in Washington, D.C. I appreciate some of the advice before we got going here today. We want to obviously talk about safe banking with some of these politicians. I think last week was a great example as to how we need this to pass, because after the news in Florida, what happens the Canadian LPs run, which, you know, doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of a sense. Yeah. I won't get into that, but uh, I have no doubt that once we get that up in play that, you know, we will get some uplistings on some major exchanges, what the timeline on that is, who knows. But um, have you had much feedback or dialogue from institutions from the announcement from last Monday? Oh, of course. I mean, I think everyone is is very, very excited. Um, you know, lots of questions in terms of, of course, I mean, you know how it goes with the markets. It's like, okay, what's next? Right. Yeah. What are, what's the next? Yeah. Right. Um, and which is which is totally, totally fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think folks are very interested in in the next steps. I think folks are very interested in kind of what are the chances, what what it was the process, right? A lot of process questions. Um, and I think in general, just folks going, oh my gosh, like this is actually a go and um, digesting just the massive implications this has for um for the state, right? I mean, you're talking about you yeah. know moving something from approximately two billion to six billion dollars. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen estimates come out recently from other independent third party groups that are 
more than that. And so, um, you know, it's just, it's getting from here to there. And the fact that we could be sitting here, you know, um, 12 months from now and, and just literally be talking about, right, an implementation that's weeks yeah. away. Um, so it's a really fast timeline. Um, and I think that um, sort of that um, that excited reality is, is starting to sit in. Set in. One, one thing, or I, I said one more question, actually. One thing that we've heard <laughs> with, obviously with Florida, we have single use gets it on the ballot the easiest. With that, we had to omit home grow. Um, do you think that we see home grow in Florida eventually? Um, and this adult use rollout will be incremental and eventually Floridians will have the right um, to home grow under these laws? I sure hope so. Um, so, and just to be clear, um, single subject is a requirement. Like yeah. literally the past time that this, uh, that there was an attempt for um, adult use, it had both adult use and home grow and it did not, it did not pass single subject with the Supreme Court. So it is very clear. They laid out a roadmap and because again, in, in our opinion, a portion of decrim, which comes along and that yeah. cannot be under, you know, kind of overstated here, right? So with this, with this amendment, it basically says that all adults 21 and up are allowed to pos have possess up to three ounces of cannabis of which five grams can be concentrate. And so that yeah. adds a decriminalization um, into, right, this, this amendment and you know, one of my big passions, I think all of our big passions is for folks to not go to jail for small amounts of cannabis for personal yes. use. And so Hard. that needed to happen, I think, as a really important first step. And then, of course, you know, the court said that those are inextricably linked because then you have to have somewhere to purchase it legally. Right. And so that's how those two things go together then. Right. So you get that in place. Then to your point, as a secondary step, you would come in and say, okay, home grow now is allowable. That can be done just like anything, right? Legislative process or through um, an amendment. To be clear, I think we're the only MMTC in Florida who has consistently supported every single adult use and or home grow amendment that has been on the ballot. So, or that has attempted to be on the ballot. And so we carried positions in our stores, we are and always have been um, supporters of home grow for personal use. I mean, I, yeah. I think it's just a no, a no, a no brainer. Um, but we did feel like there needed to be some sequence to this thing um, so that we could we could do it the right way um, yeah. in Florida. And so um, I would love to be a part of and, and be supportive of a home grow of a home grow initiative for personal use in the future. Great feedback. Um, some big numbers. I think we shared last week: two hundred and fifteen million. Were the latest numbers in Florida. A medicinal only for I think it was the month of February, Anthony, if I'm correct. Uh, only behind oh, yeah. Mich Michigan and California, which obviously has adult use, but gives you an idea if this comes and passes. I think Maryland had 38 million this time a year ago and did 88 million. So you can understand the benefits of adult use. But you've hinted to us before this could be a six to seven billion dollar market with 133 dispensaries right now. Um, you are the great white shark, you know, in the great state of Florida ready to take advantage. But, uh, you know, kudos to you and your team, hard work. Uh, but if there's ever an example of one company doing a really good job in one market, I think truly even Florida comes to mind, but appreciate the feedback and the update. Thanks so much. Appreciate you guys uh, having me on. And, and listen, one thing I will say, there's going to be plenty of business to go around here. So, yeah. um, you know, there, this is going to be a huge market to your point and um, lots of room for lots of players and for, um, you know, and we need that. We need a healthy market in order to be able to service um, service the customers and, and candidly to make sure that our medical program, which I'm super passionate about, remains um, one of the best and most robust medical programs in the country. Um, you know, patients rely on us for, for those products. And so, you know, it's going to be really critical for us to have, um, you know, strong participation, which is why I'm inviting all of my friends to get involved in this because again this is um this is not a scenario where there's there's like plenty of plenty of business plenty plenty of things to do um and uh just really really super thrilled really and, and humbled that um you know have an opportunity to be in this position at this moment in time one word answer does adult use get passed in fall in november hell yes <laughs> that's two i'll take that as one though <laughs> good stuff kim we'll look forward to uh seeing you in washington and as well at the uh, benzenga conference next week but in the meantime let's keep in touch all right absolutely and hopefully we'll see you soon bye yeah it's great bye. thanks kim
TDR Trade of Black podcast here on a Monday, MSO's Mondays. In a minute, we're going to have Dan Aarons on from Advisor Shares. That was a great podcast, that's for sure. But uh, love, obviously, her conviction at the end that she believes adult use will indeed pass come fall. Of course, she's going to uh, say and think that. But why not with the approval rating at 60%? But some really good questions. And I love the fun part, as you said, like, what's the upside? And, uh, you know, how much more as far as dispensaries do you want to grow into? But big opportunity, to say the least, right? Yeah, yeah. Big, big opportunity. I still think we see a couple of MSOs come into the state um, and acquire some operations. Um, being Ascend, probably Terrasend, um, just being the low-hanging names, because yeah. that would make sense uh, to their business footprint. And then I think we could probably see some consolidation or combination of companies in the state that are currently operating. I mean, maybe outfits that have 30, dispense, 30 retail locations yeah. with moderate growth facilities. I mean, combining the, a six billion dollar market, combining them and creating an enterprise that that more so caters to the sum of the parts um, could make a lot of sense um, for some uh, for some Florida operators that are currently in the market now. So a big opportunity for players that want to enter in this space, and for those that let's say are already in, and let's say that were to happen, a very lucrative opportunity for them as well. Am I reading that correctly? I mean, it's a very it's a very lucrative opportunity, but it's also a very expensive opportunity um to get yeah. into the state i mean florida assets obviously come at a premium um licensing comes at a premium if you want to go buy a piece of paper and then deploy the capex yeah you're going to need to come probably with a nine-figure check um when it's when it's all said and done so i mean yeah florida is going to be a big opportunity but if you want to come down here you want to compete and actually get market share yeah it's no going kidding. to be a very very expensive game um, so yeah, big opportunity in both ways, in a number of ways for existing companies that are currently down there. And then as well for companies that want to get in for companies, like you said, that are, uh, you know, you see some of these mergers and acquisitions that are made. Um, all right. That concludes uh, segment number one. That was not into the wire. That was our featured interview with Kim Rivers, CEO of True Leaf. TDR Trade of Black podcast here on a Monday. As usual, smash that like button, leaves lots of comments. We're getting lots of comments now. Appreciate everybody for reaching out. We're heading over to Washington tomorrow. We're going to be doing a live stream on Friday, probably not on Wednesday, just to give everyone just a heads up right now, because we're going to be busy at Capitol Hill all day. Uh, we are going to be doing some incredible pre-record interviews throughout the week as we look to give you guys an inside look at what we experienced at Capitol Hill this week. So we've got content basically scheduled out. As I said, live stream going out on Friday, and then we've got interviews from Washington beginning Saturday, Sunday, monday and tuesday so bear with us keep patient as much as the live stream won't be on the content that we post is going to be even better than the live stream all right that concludes uh segment number one with kim rivers now mitch cue the music it's mso's monday All right, DA joins us, Mr. Dan Aarons. Good to see you. A lot of inflow last week. What a week that was. But uh, were you a little surprised or not at all after you got the news from Florida and you saw the way these Canadian LPs ripped? <laughs> yeah, it's it was a um, I don't know a roller coaster of a week. Uh, yeah. Let's say that. Um, yeah, and something you know there was. I've seen discussions out on X and things like this that. Um, you know, we try to explain as much as possible that just because there's more people buying a fund today, perhaps in volume, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to see creation units of inflows today. So that's what we saw last week. Um, yep. I think uh, market makers were holding some inventory. Um, they needed to do creations and they were putting money in. They put some in Monday, they put some in Tuesday, they put some in Wednesday. But um, performance was kind of a uh, whipsaw roller coaster crazy town you uh, think? Thursday to Friday. <laughs> That's for sure. What canopy trade the one day was it four? Four, I think four hundred canopy did 400 million in dollar weighted volume, yeah, in one day. Roar was up was what nuts. 50 Aurora was up 55% on the week. SNDL saw 52 week high. So yeah, the Canadian I mean, LP. To put it into perspective, Air Wellness didn't trade 100,000 shares until about two o'clock this afternoon. Um, that's crazy. That's that's the volume. That's so that they did about $250,000 worth of volume today. Yeah. You know, so, so uh, when people, they, 
we all do too much comparison of LP versus oh, yeah. MSO, don't we? Yeah. But and hey, I'm wearing my YOLO gear today because that's the fun that <laughs> uh, holds. It holds, <laughs> it holds uh, some canopy underweight. It holds some uh, Tilray underweight. You know, I've been vocal about the fact that I like Village Farms better. I like High Tide better. Yeah. Uh, I can see the story with Sundial. Uh, it's a pretty big holding comparatively in that fund. But um, when a lot of people are arguing about LP versus MSO, you got to remember traders are in LPs. Yes. They're not, they're not looking at the fundamentals. They give zero shits about the fundamentals and um, what uh, Canopy is going to do with its earnings. It's a meme stock. Nothing more, nothing less at this point. So traders don't need to be arguing with investors and vice versa. Seth Jacob's going to like that. He writes, easy on the LP shad. So I bet you that comment's only going to feel to the fire. Dan, but, Dan's right, though. We talk about it with Dan the Chartman. Do you I mean, these guys are traders. Like a till These guys are yeah, these guys are traders. They see flashing lights on their screen. They yeah. flock over there to the action and the liquidity. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing, there's wrong, nothing with wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. They need to be in the market. Yeah, but they're not looking at they're not looking at the fundamentals of these businesses. They're not looking at safe 280 e etc. They're looking at CGC. My indicator's going off. I'm allocating capital there. Hopefully, getting in and out, and I'm on with it. Yeah. They don't. They don't care. They're mercenaries. I think the way you define that, though, that's our YouTube short from this week's podcast, because that's pretty much bang on, Dan, if you think about it. It is definitely a trader's uh, environment when it comes to a lot of the LPs at this point. Though I will say there's some definitely some strong companies. Tilray, they report their earnings tomorrow morning. So anything that you're watching for pertaining to that? Um, I, I, they're going to miss. Don't they miss every single quarter? Yeah. But time, Simon speaks a great game. He is enthusiastic, and they are going to guide to the moon. Um, and then <laughs> look at Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and here comes the Tilray crowd after us right now. Oh, it's not no, a it's good. It's not it's a it's good. good. We own it. We own it in Yolo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it, it it's good, but I mean, nothing could cool off the rally like an earnings report. Um. I mean, it's. I, I want to hear what Erwin has to say about Germany, which right. Erwin will have a lot to say about Germany. Right. I want to hear what Erwin has to say about the Canadian market. We saw. I don't talk about. He doesn't talk about that. He talks about beer and Germany. Yeah, in the U.S. I think Germany is going to be the highlight. I'll listen to the earnings call. I'll zoom out on all the fundamentals. What's the conversation about Germany? What's the opportunity in Germany? What are they doing around Germany? And take it from there. Yeah. Um, and then the alcohol business is, I care, I don't, I care about that very little. Yeah. Um, in, in, in the States, as you should. Did you get a chance to listen to the uh, interview much that we did with uh, Kim? Was there any takeaways for you? Did you hear about it by chance? Uh, I did hear that. Um, enjoy talking to, uh, to Kim. She is a good yeah. one. And um, no, she was definitely um, the leader easily. Um, for that, uh, yes, um, ballot in Florida. So, um, no, nah, good job. And, um, yeah, it, it, it's funny when people go through all the favorites and not favorites and, um, people were a little bit not excited about true leave two years ago. <laughs> and, I know, uh, um, what they're doing now, um, no, nah, their, their stock uh, performance is showing it. And, um, there is no way, there is no way that uh, adult use is already priced in to these companies with the uh, Florida exposure. It's, it's, it's yeah. not possible. Uh, hey, they haven't had the vote yet. Uh, we, we still got to pass 60%. We, everybody yeah. thinks we can get it done, but it's not easy. And um, no, I think we're going to see some appreciation. Yeah, I said, yeah. That, I said that last week. And, yeah, I said that last week and I took some heat for it because I was like, guys, Monday was the first step. The real money that's going to come in on a Florida re-rate is after that vote passes in November, because yeah. then it's th th then it's finite. Then you know that the numbers are coming in. You can model it, and you can see how much Truly is going to rip off on a quarterly basis with thirty-eight to forty percent of the market share um, of a uh, of a gargantuan adult use market. Yeah. Until then, it's just a cool headline, and we've got something to look forward to. 
Yeah, and going back to traders versus investors, yeah, that's why most MSO folks are yeah. investors. Yeah. And um, the volume is minuscule compared to the canopy until raise up the yeah. world, and, and rightly so. But um, that's why the traders aren't interested in this right now. Yeah, this is when fundamentals uh, when when we actually turn on adult use next May. Um, that's going to be some real fundamental money to the bottom line. Thank yeah. You. Well, I know sometimes you got to take a step back and look at Kim's done in the state of Florida. Like I know there was a few people here like Mark McKinney. He writes these questions are the definition of softball. Uh, I'm not trying to. I don't know what's. Um, a, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what, what to are you supposed that. to do she, here. I'm not she, trying she, to. Pump she gave us that. Yeah, she, she gave us 30 minutes of her afternoon to come on and talk about Smart and Save, talk about the Adult Use Ballot Initiative, and lightly talk about the core business. If you right. want any kind of hardball comments, go watch Fox News. I don't know what to. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. Like that was a friendly. You have that, 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 that that was a friendly interview. That wasn't any time to be adversarial. Kim, we're not Why looking to. You're talking? not looking to grill me. You're not looking to grill Kim. Yeah, uh, we're we're all here to educate. Is what we're here yeah. to do. It's not supposed to be softball. This isn't promoting True Leaf. At the end of the day, she's got a program called Smart and Safe. How many how many dollars have been allocated towards this again? Would you say, Anthony? She put forty million forty million dollars from True Leaf went into Smart and Safe. Forty million dollars, um, and now and now they're forming a coalition of the Florida operators um, to to start to get money together. I think there's been fifteen million more that are contributed um, as a whole. And I mean, to be honest, they're probably going to need to exceed that 40 million from the original go around, because this is where the real education starts. You need to sway voters now. You don't just need to get signatures. This is some heavy duty polling, data utilization yeah. and campaigning that's going to go around that. That is obscenely expensive. Give credit where credit is due, right? Um, all right. We got Benzenga coming up next week. Look forward to seeing you obviously down in Florida. So we'll take a hiatus next Monday for MSO Mondays. I'll be traveling, but, uh, we got I a bunch say. of scheduling got to figure out, but a week from today, we end up planning on posting a video during our live stream. It's going to be or pre-recorded. I'll be traveling, meeting up with you guys down in Florida, but <clears throat> we're gonna have a bunch of clips from all the different senators, congressmen and congresswomen from our visit in Washington this week. Any advice, any suggestions, Mr. Aarons, on what we should ask and why? I, I can't disagree with what was already discussed. You're talking to politicians, so ask them pointed find questions. Um, <laughs> close, cl ask them close-ended questions, because otherwise they'll climb up on their soapbox and um, yeah. And I might so, so I find it, I find it odd, or not odd, but Kim and Charlie are both going to be in Washington. Yeah, yeah. Um, which makes that. me wonder. Which makes me wonder if there's more cannabis CEOs that are going to be there, um, and there's something going on that we don't know about. That's obviously reaching pretty high up. That's what um, we do in the media skit. Let's reach. I mean, Kim and Charlie are both going to be there. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I'm Man, honestly those... going to probably reach out to a couple of the other CEOs that I have connections with to see if they're going to be in Washington uh, by yeah. chance. Well, we're going to find out one way or the other in the next 24 to 48 hours. So it'll be great. Uh, one last thing. Brett Sloan writes, Anthony, when will Zach George be on the show? Uh, from what I've heard. So I reached out to Zach. Um, Zach had a conflict. Um, we'll be in D.C. all this week, so it's not going to happen. Um, Zach has an open door invite to come on the show. Zach's a good friend of the show. Um, he's usually pretty accessible. I'm assuming he's busy. Um, if and when Zach has availability and we ha and our schedules align, Zach will be on the show. Yeah. Um, to comment on uh, on a couple of the things that we wanted to uh, get some clarity on. Yeah, and just to give you a heads up, he's actually overseas in Europe next week at an investor conference. So uh, mark it down. We're going to try to get him on in two weeks. Apologies for the delay, but like Anthony said, we're reaching out. He's got an open invitation. It's just a matter of aligning both schedules. Yeah. Uh, Dan, tell Noah and Mackenzie, are they making the trip uh, down next week? Yeah, nice. it will be the three of us down there. Yep. Awesome. We Look need one of those. Uh, we need a couple of those MSOX shirts. I'm going um, to uh, Noah DM Noah is, on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hit him up. He can send you one, or he's supposedly going to be walking around with a duffel bag of some swag. Let's just do the uh, jersey swap next week. I'll hold my TDR up. Noah can hold <laughs> up his MSOX, and we yeah. like just do the uh, signature. <laughs> that works. Do it. That works. And we'll post that. All right, sir. Uh, have a great week, and um, you know. Hopefully the inflows continue and at the most importantly, uh, safe travels down to Florida and look forward to seeing you in seven days. You guys too. 
All right. Um, we will talk. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Oh, right, nose right there. Oh. All right. Oh, there he is. What's he saying? He heard us. Feel free to stop by Bethesda this week. <laughs> nice. Which probably is, it's probably pretty close. Um, but yeah, no, if you're there, we'd love an MSOX shirt to get on the, uh, to get on the yeah. show. Who thought that ACB and weed were going to come back from the dumpster fire they were in, writes Patrick Schwartz. Yep. Well, as we touched on, it's a trader's dream when you get some positive news within the industry when it comes to some of these notorious Canadian LPs from yesteryear. I'm but, not uh, going to lie. It was exciting seeing LPs go up 30, 40% in a day. Who doesn't um, like that? Yeah, it was like 2017 all over again. It was like boom, boom, boom. I mean, when Canopy went like 30%, then 30%, the one day it went 70%. Um, I've got no problem with that. Like if that makes yep. you angry, then you need to be doing something else. Seth Jacobs, uh, love the YOLO. Yes, sir. Hopefully uh, you guys all got a great response or feedback from today's show. Again, don't like to ask softball questions. We want to have questions. people on over yeah. and over. And uh, most importantly, if there is a specific question you want us to ask, as I always say, leave it in the comments section and I'll get the question over. Tom Angel, appreciate you writing what you wrote for Marijuana Moments. It's a great question. So uh, hopefully you got some great feedback from Kim related to that as usual smash that like button i keep and, telling uh, you guys go ahead dave canopy's canopy's not a meme stock um no. canopy's not grouped into that uh into that category seth jacobs the, Q, the, the, the cusa votes actually next week it is um, coming up here so they should have some clarity on that uh on that next week yeah hello to skip squellman i love that name Skip Squelman, any comments on PSIL uh, on the sector, the psychedelic space? Man, MindMed, did it ever rip last week? MindMed, uh, MindMed came back with a vengeance. I think you're going to start to see things heat up pertaining to that space, but we'll mark that in our notes, uh, Skip, to bring that up in two weeks, uh, because as we inch closer towards the summer, I think you're going to start to see this sector build up, and then you've got Cybin, basically a third phase three trial, gearing up to go mid-year uh, this year. So all is well with some of the key drug development companies because the data is proving, as many people thought uh, in the last few years, that it's going to be strong. And some of these key companies, the four or five remain in drug development, are really showcasing some, uh, yeah. you know, life changing data, which this world needs. Um, all right. Smash that like button. Leave comments. We want this to go viral. Anthony, safe travels to Washington, D.C. And I'll see you oh, with your suit and red tie on tomorrow. Forward. And uh, look forward to seeing you. In the meantime, everybody, enjoy the rest of your day. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. And if you want to learn more about the emerging industries that we cover, then leave a comment below and let us know who you want us to interview, the questions you want asked, and the information that you want to learn. We want to hear from you. As usual, click on that bell for all notifications to get the latest information. Share this video with your network and don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we would not be here without you. Thanks.